But when I first got asked to deliver this speech, my, reaction, my first reaction was, oh, it's a very posh gig. <laughs> It'll enhance my standing as a member of the establishment. <laughs> and my second reaction was, oh, I'm not qualified to do this, because I suffer terribly, or throughout my career, I've suffered terribly from what I would call imposter syndrome. <laughs> and, but I was reassured that you wanted a perspective from outside the, your particular classical music world. But I still, I grew up in a, what would be called, it used to be called a working class household. And I was trying to think of a kind of politically correct equivalent to that. So I thought about people of restricted taste. <laughs> because we didn't have classical music on in our house and it wasn't for the likes of us. But I do, it does bring me round to the central issue for me and why I felt like there's something I wanted to say to you tonight was about art and class, culture and class. I mean, we all care about the quality of our culture, but are the tears shed at an opera any better than those shed at a football match? Are they better quality tears? Because <laughs> sometimes I think the way people talk, you know, they do have, think there's a sort of a vintage type of tear that's shed at blind <laughs> But please, please, classical musicians, avoid the C word. And the C word I want to talk about this evening is cool. <laughs> cool is a word that often crops up in describing art and artists. And it's always been a bit of a term that's bugged me. Uh, the minute something is described as cool, my instincts, my instincts tell me it's on the wane. For, uh, for me, being creative as an artist it's all about being unselfconscious and being prepared to make a bit of a fool of myself. That's a very important thing. And cool, in a nutshell, is the opposite of that. And in my experience, embarrassment is not fatal. And coolness somehow implies... I know it's hard to imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and at this moment, I'm thinking, mm, maybe it can be. Anyway... Uh, uh, Coolness somehow implies that there's a right thing to do, whereas creativity is mistakes. It is making mistakes. Few groups can be more straighter, more conservative, when you think about it, than teenagers who take cool seriously. And what makes cool very immature in my book is it's a sort of binary judgment. You know, it's hip, square, in, out. Uh, my 15-year-old neighbour, I quizzed him the other week about what the current words for cool were, he tells me that um, cool, it can either be sick or nang, uh, and uncool is whack. Or interestingly, for me, considering the attention span of the modern youth, another word for uncool is long. <laughs> Man, that opera was long. <laughs> so beware cool. And I'd like to end, anyway, with a plea for difficulty, because I think that is the coolest thing that you all do. You do something incredibly difficult. And there seems to be a bit of an uh, uh, analogy to that word. We want to make it all easy for everyone so they can all have a go. <laughs> and one of my guiding principles in my life has been to follow the path of most resistance. Because, you know, <laughs> as soon as I can start doing something well, I kind of I get a bit bored of it, really. I try to do something a bit harder like give speeches here. Anyway, <laughs> and easy, one of the enemies I like, because artists need an enemy, of course now we've got a LibCon <laughs> coalition to hate, so it's going to be, it's much more juicy as an artist now all of a sudden. <laughs> but of course one of the enemies I particularly, is consumerism, because consumerism will always make it easier for you. That is one of its principles. It will make it easier, faster, simpler. That's the thing that consumerism will always do. I mean, apparently the sale of oranges has declined because that's quite difficult to peel. <laughs> and so I'm thinking of setting up a new web service to sort of to replace Twitter because I think in the present attention span deficit, I'm going to call it grunt. <laughs> Only five characters you can send at a time. <laughs> but... Uh, when I listen to a piece of classical music, all like the lovely Haydn I've just heard, what makes me well up is not just the, you know, the melody, sublime melody, or the sensitive interpretation of the musicians, 
It is the thought of the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of practice. I mean, Richard Sennett, who's a musician himself, uh, the philosopher, he puts it at 10,000 hours to become good at something. Ten, that's four years of full-time study. And that's, that I find moving, just in itself, there's people dedicated to that. I'm in awe of, you know, the rigour. And I'm, I'm a bit jealous, actually, of you musicians, that you ha seem to have a much more clearer vision of what is, you know, what you're aiming at. In art nowadays, there's that terrible thing that anything can go. And it does make me a bit sad sometimes. So, please keep doing insanely difficult things. Please continue, continue to make difficult music that I will aspire to understand. And please do it for the love of it. For here in the arts, we have to set a good example. So thank you.